good fun at the Cat Awards tonight. It's time to shine the trophies, pronounce the names just right. It's time to start the party at the Cat Awards tonight. Ah, the magical world of community theater, where dreams are big, budgets are small, and the drama is both on and off the stage. But fear not, dear audience, for amidst the chaos and sequin costumes lies a beacon of recognition and celebration, the Cat Award Show. Picture this, a motley crew of actors, directors, techies, and other volunteers, all united by their love for stage and their undenying dedication to the arts, even if it means working by day, rehearsing by night, and sewing costumes and painting their sets in their sleep. And let me tell you, these acceptance speeches are worth the price of admission alone. From tearful thank yous to impromptu renditions of show tunes, you never know what you're gonna get. It's like a box of chocolates, but with more jazz hands. Community theater is not just about putting your art up on stage. It's about joy and love and being yourself and supporting each other. The spirit of collaboration and camaraderie is celebrated at the Cat Awards and it's justly deserved. And remember folks, whether you're a leading lady or a silent backstage hero, you're definitely a star. My name is Carl Bishop. I will be doing a number from Sound of Music. Oh, my bad. Yeah. My name is Sharon Olson. My name is Stuart Bentley. My name is Tracy Smith. I'm, my name is Jeanette Simino. Uh, I'm Doran McIntosh. Colleen Bishop. My name is Ian Pond. Okay, Sean Anderson. I'm Daisy Pond. My name is Susan Soprovich. I'm Dan Gibbons. My name is Mandy. Do I have to say my last name? Is that important? It really is a celebration for all of the different theatre companies to come together and celebrate everything that we've done over the year. And we're all together, we're like a family. So it's great, it's kind of like our Oscars nights. It's, it's a fun night to go out and just have a great time all together. And that's what we do, we get together, we celebrate and we do it because we love it. None of us are here because we're paid, we do it because we love theatre. Most of the years that I've gone it's just been a lot of socializing and the awards are just kind of a bonus that you're there but you get to see friends that you haven't seen much of the year you get to reconnect with friends from the shows that you've done that season which is great or shows from previous seasons and and it, it's it's a nice bonding experience every year the show is dope because like it pulls all of the all of the um the performers and the you know artistic teams of all the different companies that don't always get the opportunity to intersect um, you know, sometimes we, we get a little siloed with our companies, right? And people go, well, I've only ever done this with, I've only ever done, you know, X with this company or Y with that company. So it's really neat when everybody gets to get together and you have the opportunity to like cross, cross over. It's the only recognition event period for community theater. Everybody in community theater on the most part are volunteers. And that means that we have day jobs that take a lot of time and we have other things such as families that may not be in the theater. But the reality is the Cat Awards recognizes people and the people who come and work on the Cat Awards and work in theater, it's all volunteers. And you know that you have to love theater and you have to have a passion if you're going to spend the amount of time and effort that we do to create community theater and to create these awards. Well, I mean, the budget is obviously different from, like, the Oscars. <laughs> right, just a touch. Like, I haven't seen, like, much of a red carpet, but, like, it's fine. We'll figure that out eventually. I'm sure we've got one in, like, a storage room somewhere from some show. We should just roll that out. <laughs> I've got AstroTurf from, from Trailer Park on my balcony. Like, we have something somewhere. Uh, that's totally irrelevant. Uh, f what was the question again? <laughs> That's where all of my best friends came from um, and continue to come from, honestly. That's where I, I find the people I want to hang out with and who want to hang out with me, um, who understand my weird. Oh, I met the love of my life doing theater. Uh, it's 
where I found my husband and went on dates with him. Uh, years ago, back in the mid-90s, uh, my wife and I were doing a production of uh, Babes in Toyland. That's actually where we met. We were just talking about how our first date was a video retrospective on Storybook Theatre. Our very first date was an event for Storybook Theatre, just like this, where we were talking about an anniversary event and what theatre means to us. It's definitely helped me in my public speaking and public presenting um, from a career perspective. The next one would be, it was a gateway for me to get into professional theatre with ATP as a head scenic artist. If I hadn't painted as many sets as I had, there was I don't think there would be any way that I would have transitioned like that. Since I started being involved, I think the, the, the community theatre scene has really expanded in its quest to be taken more seriously and more professional. There's so much growth, so many opportunities, and, and we just keep going for more. And although I know there's some people going, well, why do you need another company that does X, Y, and Z? It's, you know, maybe because that's bringing a different environment um, and, a, and a, 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 a smaller piece to the puzzle, but it's, it's still bringing a viable piece to the puzzle. We're really trying to acknowledge the Calgary and area more, I think, and that's really driven uh, in big part by this award process where to fully vote and nominate people, you need to have seen X number of shows from Y number of companies, and some of them are encouraged to be out of town. So it's helping people get to know the things that get done in Okotoks and Strathmore and Claire's home and Bear's Paw? I think it's Bear's Paw. Wherever Swamp Donkey is. <laughs> you know, I've, I've read that question about four times and I was like, hmm. Be careful creating new awards categories <laughs> um, for fun. I don't know. Um, okay, I actually thought about this one. Probably, why didn't you include this category? Uh, just every year it's always, why didn't you include this? Why don't you do that? So I'd say, why didn't you include this? I think it should be called, that was amazing. Perfect attendance. So if somebody manages to go an entire show without missing anything, I think they should get an award of some kind. For people who have either created something or performed in such a way that was like amazing. Oh, let's see. Best backstage food. Um, Worst screw up on stage. Uh, <laughs> that would yeah. be a long one. Lo longest tech night. <laughs> and not like, wow, that acting was amazing, that singing was amazing, that dancing was amazing. No. I would love to bring back some sort of recognition for crew, like best scene change or something like that, like most seamless scene change or best crew, like as, as nominated by the cast or the production company because no one knows like if you know if the show's going well you don't know how hard that crew's working like the year i learned how to stealth walk for a show like although i never have a chance of winning this anymore sometimes i wish we had the newcomer still around um i liked the newcomer category because you get to maybe they, they maybe not weren't the best performance but they were such a, a bright new face on stage that you know you want to see more of them um, the year we did Legally Blonde and we had to sing and uh, jump rope. Shows up on four hours of sleep but still manages to put together a really f***ing great show and dance her face off and then afterwards go, yeah, it was okay. That's the award category. Um, maybe that time when Rich created that elevator for, it was um, how to succeed in business without really trying. No, no. Anyway, but it was amazing. If you went backstage, there was all these pulley systems and I was just like... <gasps> But yeah, I think it would be cool to recognize something like that. Probably the one that took me by the surprise the most was um, when Michelle Brennenberg as the cat girl uh, killed herself on stage to save the host of the night. Uh, I believe it was Dave Gagne. Um, probably 
that took me by the surprise because I knew she was going to end her role as Catgirl. I just didn't expect her to go out in that way. Um, unexpected. I would say that I am known for a particular category, original script, but I've lost it as often as I've won it, I would say, at minimum. And usually that's a fair beat. Like, there have been some great scripts by other writers that I was happy to see recognized. Gilbert and Sullivan was a surprise. <laughs> if he'd asked me before that night, I would have said he lost the original script award to Gilbert and Sullivan is the punchline to a Dan so old, how old is he joke. Well, uh, Tori dropped his pants once. Um... Just then, someone from the public came walking into the bathroom, saw a man in a giant cat suit at the toilet paper roll doing this. It was probably the most unexpected moment, and, uh, and I thought it was hilarious, and, uh, and that would have been when Doug Keeling came out uh, as the cat girl in his uh, you know, stockings and, and, and sexy outfit. I thought that was great. That was absolutely brilliant. I was wearing high heels and because I was producing the show, I had to go down to accept the award on behalf of the company. I'm not used to wearing heels and there was a bit of a slope. So, I mean, I had to go from the back of the theater down to the podium wearing heels that I'm not used to on a slope and I kind of looked like a raptor. If Aaron Conrad had known that there was a distinct chance that he would be accepting uh, outstanding direction of a play while dressed as Batman, he might have picked a different outfit for superhero night. But he didn't, and God bless him, he, he accepted that award in the bat suit, and I love him for that. When Aaron Conrad uh, had his then girlfriend come up to him, uh, come up with him on stage to deliver uh, a tribute to the theater widows, all the all the family members and wives and girlfriends who get left behind, who while people are doing their their, their shows and their rehearsals and they're away forever and come back emotionally distraught. Only, it wasn't about Theater Widows. He was there to propose to her and make her more officially a widow, I suppose. Uh, and that was pretty cool. I've been out of game a couple of years. Is that not just Jeanette? Well, Doug Keeling for a while there was a Cat Lad, which I think the ladies particularly enjoyed. And then I think uh, Jeanette has done a, a stellar job over the years as the, as, the, as the cat lady. Oh, it has to be a cat. I'm on board with the cat. So it is a caterpillar, uh, but like the one that has the digger bit. And so like we we'll re reach down and grab the dirt and then be like beep, 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 over there. I'm not sure it should be a cat. Could we actually have an Oscar like in, just just for one year? Cats? are not completely domesticated. They're partially feral. Actors and backstage and theater people are not completely domesticated. They're kind of feral. Oh, I'd still say it would have to be Clark. <laughs> yeah. Like if it was in the audience and it picked up the person who won and brought them to the stage. Uh, my first thought was Dame Judi Dench in the butthole edit of the musical Cats. I'd probably say Scotty Grinton. <laughs> it would be Doug Keeling as the cat girl. <laughs> Otherwise, the raccoon in the astronaut suit sounds pretty fun, too. I think that could be an option. <laughs>
Do I really need all of these penis jokes? Yes! Those are my favorite part! Alas, poor Yorick. A new him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest. See, you went the other way on that one. You, you turned up the suck and turned down the great. So if you could like... Maybe oh. this is a you problem. We got cheers and chunks, not an ounce of flow. So long we all a glow. There's one last dance bit. No, you're pulling! Okay, uh, recess to check on the Thunderdome. Busy, writing a farce to spite Jeanette. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. What? Lead actor has just lost his voice. So what do we do? How's your Chicago? What? You're the sound up, singing is sound. Oh god. I don't care about expensive things, cashmere coats, diamond rings. Fear not, for I, John Barrymore's ghost, am here to teach you the secrets to portraying Hamlet. The ways to dig deeper, to discover new plateaus of acting ability, much as I... My eyes are up here. We're, We're trying! trying. Uh, 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 oh, oh, thank God. Oh, it's just a dream. Oh, oh. Bad dream, baby. No! carrying enough about a thing like pinball to build a cult around it. Think you could stop playing Candy Crush during the show? Oh, think you could go to hell? I forged checks, impersonated the pilot and a doctor, and became a lawyer. I am the greatest fraudster in America. So, catch me if you can. <laughs> Caught you. What? Oh, jeez. We'll step out of the dark, show the crowds just what's in store. <laughs> Zip up your pants, ask a voice you can't ignore. Finding your light, clearing your mind, and all of your worries are left behind. We'll find it inside the white whale known as Moby Dick. Are you sure? Pretty sure. And if I'm wrong, we'll be rich in sperm oil. <laughs> oh, grow up, Lancelot! Because sometimes you just want to see an abusive dentist get eaten by a carnivorous plant. <laughs> Abusive dentist is redundant, am I right? My father was a dentist. He's gonna roll on down, down the white water. Log drivers won't. Sorry, can't start yet. As we flatten the curve, then we'll work up the nerve to be in a room and reverse. It's turf. There'll be life outside our apartment. Very sober in thought. And that's a thought that was turning over in my head, over and over and over until today. I'm wiser and sadder, Brick, through this experience with I, I had just gone through. Wow. <laughs> And wave! And LX344, go. And we're out! Good show. Good show. I can fix that dark spot. Let it go. But... Let. It. Go. <laughs> my name is Louis B. Hobson, and I directed my first community show probably 56 years ago. O only to remember that what you're doing, no matter if it's directing or acting or backstage, that this is an experience you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. So you want to make it something that you want 
to remember. And so anything that's petty that's happening around it, you've got to get rid of that because you don't want to remember that. You want to remember it as a really special experience. And there, everybody sitting out here tonight has had those very special memories that they're taking with them. And that's what community theater is all about. It's certainly what professional theater is about, but I think more so what community theater is about. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Ah, with songs they have sung, like you've heard a thousand times before. Wrong word. The hills are alive. Meow, 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 meow. I'm not singing. I don't sing. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the hills are alive with the sound of music. With a song it has sung for a thousand years. And that's all I remember. Oh, no, 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 no. Ian used to pull this all the time. He's like, you have to be in the musical number. And the thing is that I didn't. I didn't. It was spite every time. I'm not falling for it again. You would not want to hear it. Uh, I did a musical in my first year of university, and the critic said, thank heavens, Mr. Hobson can act. Drop Baron Panda. I'm not singing. I don't sing. <laughs>